it's Michelle, your CXC biology tutor. In this video on the circulatory system, I'm going to be paying special attention to how the heart functions as a double pump. So we know that the heart is a muscular organ and it's responsible for pumping blood throughout the entire body. So you need to understand that the heart is divided into the left side and the right side, which is separated by a septum. So it consists of four chambers. We have the left atrium and the left ventricle, and then the right atrium and the right ventricle. So I mentioned that the heart functions as a double pump. So that simply means that the blood is going to enter the heart twice. So you will realize that I have the left and the right sides color coded using red and blue. So let's take a look at the diagram of the heart. So as you can see, the right hand side highlighted in blue, that simply represents the deoxygenated blood that will be passing through that side of the heart. The left hand side highlighted in red represents oxygenated blood that would pass through that side. So you can clearly see the septum will separate these two sides of the heart to prevent the blood from mixing. So you don't want the blood on the left side mixing with the blood on the right side. So that septum is important in separating the different si the two sides of the heart. So let's pay attention to why the heart is really separated into two sides and why we have oxygenated blood coming through the left hand side and then deoxygenated blood coming through the right hand side. So we're going to show you the blood flow through the heart twice. Okay, so let, we're going to start on the left hand side of the heart. But you need to understand that the blood is going to be entering each side simultaneously. So as the heart is pumping, the blood will be entering the left hand side carrying the oxygenated blood and then it's going to be entering the right hand side carrying deoxygenated blood. It's going to be all happening at the same time. But for explanatory purposes, I'm going to start with one side and explain what happens to the blood as it enters the heart twice. So let's start from the left hand side. So blood rich in oxygen is going to be coming from the lungs. So this is the oxygenated blood, rich in oxygen coming from the lungs. So remember the lungs is responsible for taking in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide. So that blood coming from the lungs is going to be rich in oxygen, hence why it is called oxygenated blood. So it's going to enter the left hand side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. So that word pulmonary means related to the lungs. So the pulmonary veins collects the oxygenated blood from the lungs and takes it to the left atrium. So that's the first chamber, the upper chamber, usually smaller. So that left atrium is going to receive the oxygenated blood. And when the left atrium contracts, Remember, the, the heart is made up of muscular tissue, cardiac muscle. So in order for it to pump, that cardiac muscle needs to contract. So the left atrium is going to contract and force the oxygenated blood into the left ventricle. And you're going to notice that we have a pair of valves here, the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. So that bicuspid valve, along with all the other valves in the heart, are resp is responsible for preventing backflow. You want the blood going in one direction only. So you don't want that blood going back where it came from. So as the left atrium contracts, it squeezes and forces that blood past the bicuspid valve and into the left ventricle. Now the left ventricle, once it receives the blood from the left atrium, that in turn is going to contract and force the blood up past the aortic valve. So you're seeing another valve here. So that aortic valve separates the left ventricle from the aorta. So that blood is going to be pumped up into the aorta, passing the aortic valve. And that oxygenated blood needs to be transported 
and circulated to all the organs of the body. So the aorta is the largest artery in the body. So it's going to be connected to various organs. So it's going to be responsible for transporting blood rich in oxygen to all the various organs. So that's why you see these various branches that's representing arteries that are going to be connected to the different organs of the body. So that blood rich in oxygen, once it has offloaded its oxygen and the various nutrients that it will be carrying to the tissues and the organs, it then needs to return to the right hand side of the heart. So by now that blood is going to be lacking oxygen. So that's why we refer to it as deoxygenated blood. So it's lacking oxygen. So it needs to return to the heart in order for it to collect the oxygen again from the lungs. So this deoxygenated blood is going to enter the vena cava and you will realize you have two branches of the vena cava. We have the superior vena cava which would be brain blood from the upper body and then the inferior vena cava which will be brain, body, brain blood from the lower body. So these two branches of the vena cava is going to be brain in the deoxygenated blood into the right side of the heart. So that deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium, the upper chamber, and then once that right atrium contracts, it's going to force the blood past the tricuspid valve. So you're seeing another valve here. So that tricuspid valve, remember the valves are responsible for preventing backflow. So the blood passes the tricuspid valve and is forced into the right ventricle. Now the right ventricle, when that contracts, that is going to force the blood up past the pulmonic valve, also known as the pulmonary valve. So that separates the, like, the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery. So that deoxygenated blood is going to be carried through the pulmonary artery towards the lungs. Why is it going to the lungs? To pick up oxygen, because it's lacking oxygen at this point. So when this deoxygenated blood enters the right hand side of the heart, the sole purpose is to reach the lungs where it can collect oxygen again. So now that we know that you should have an understanding of how the blood enters the heart twice, let's just quickly review all that I've discussed already. So the structure of the heart, so remember, is divided into the left side and the right side. And that is separated by a septum. So the heart consists of the four chambers, the left atrium and the left ventricle, then the right atrium and the right ventricle. So in order to help you to remember which side has which type of blood, you can use this acronym LORD, L-O-R-D. So left oxygenated, right deoxygenated. So that will definitely help you to better understand which side is carrying which type of blood. And another note here. So if you go back to the diagram, you will notice that the left ventricle is actually thicker than the right ventricle. The reason for this is that the blood that is forcing through the left atrium to the left ventricle, on that, that left side is responsible for carrying blood throughout the entire body. So when the blood reaches the left ventricle, it is going to be under very high pressure. So that high pressured blood is going to be forced through the aorta and taken to all the various parts of the body. So the reason that the muscular walls of the left ventricle are much thicker than the right ventricle is because it has to withstand that greater force, that greater pressure of the blood, which has to be pumped up through the aorta and taken to all the various parts of the body. With the right ventricle, it's thinner because it's not going that far. The blood is not going that far. It's just being taken to the lungs, which is nearby. So it doesn't have to withstand as high pressure as the left ventricle. All right, so let's, let's review the blood vessels that are connected to the heart. So on the left hand side, you need to remember, remember the left side, 
bringing in oxygenated blood, taking out that oxygenated blood to the entire body. So we have the pulmonary vein, which would take oxygenated blood to the heart. So that's taking the oxygenated blood towards the left atrium. And the aorta is responsible for taking the oxygenated blood to all the organs of the body. So remember that the aorta is the largest artery in the body. So on the right side now, we have the vena cava and we have two branches, the superior and the inferior vena cava. Remember that the superior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body, while the inferior vena cava brings blood from the lower part of the body. So the vena cava is the largest vein in the body. So that is taking deoxygenated blood towards the heart. Now the pulmonary artery would be responsible for taking the deoxygenated blood to the lungs to pick up the oxygen again. So those are the important blood vessels that you have to remember. Now in terms of the heart valves, remember that valves will prevent backflow of blood. So they keep the blood flowing in one direction. So we have the atrioventricular valves, which are between the atria and the ventricles. So these include the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve on the left side and the tricuspid valve on the right side. Now the other set of valves are known as the semilunar valves and these are found between the ventricles and the arteries. So the aortic valve, that would be found between the left ventricle and the aorta. Well, the pulmonary or the pulmonic valve will be found between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. So now we've examined the structure of the heart and its associated blood vessels. Let's take a look at the two types of blood circulation. So remember, the heart acts as a double pump, bringing blood into the heart twice. So basically this means there are two different journeys that blood will take before and after it enters the heart. So the first journey you'll look at is the pulmonary circulation. On this journey, deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart needs to be taken to the lungs to receive oxygen. Then once the blood has collected the oxygen from the lungs, it enters the left side of the heart before it can go on its journey around the body. So as I said before, pulmonary means related to the lungs. So pulmonary circulation describes the journey that the blood would take from the heart to the lungs to pick up oxygen and then from the lungs to the heart to deliver that oxygen. Now the second journey is the systemic circulation. The blood that is rich in oxygen, which enters the left side of the heart, needs to be now circulated from the heart to all the body the body's tissues and organs. So that is why the word systemic is used because it means that the entire body is affected. So oxygen and the nutrients present in the blood can be delivered to the entire body. So these are the two types of blood circulation, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. So I hope you now have a better understanding of how the heart functions as a double pump, bring blood into the heart twice.